Well, I guess now is as good a time as any to start off this uh, off this vlog. Hey guys, Jimmy here, and welcome to WEC Silverstone the vlog. Uh, I'm currently in Kettering, meeting up uh, with Joe, who I'm going to be going to the event with, and um, just watch qualifying highlights, seeing that Toyota is on pole. Glorious Nippon Steel wins again, so pretty hyped about that. Yeah, not, not really quite sure what to expect in this one. I know a lot of people who uh, follow the follow my channel or stream or whatever are, are coming to this event so can I do my best to meet up with, with as many people as possible also know that Bailey is going as well so I've got to get him on camera as much as possible because he hates that and uh, yeah looking forward to it looking forward to it Saturday now I'm, I'm only going to Sunday so got a, a day I've got a sleep yet between now and race cars but uh, yeah <laughs> race cars are cool hello say hello Joe hello there you go this is Joe uh, how do First time meeting you today. Yes, it was. It? it was. Nice train, state, train station rendezvous, nice and romantic. Yeah, I was so, pulled at the top of the road. <laughs> so uh, we're in Kettering now. Gonna get some snacks. Gonna have some race day snacks. And uh, later I get to go on your fancy pedals and wheel, don't I? Yes, you do. You will uh, embarrass me straight away. That one. Joe has a Fanate... Fanatec CSW. Yeah. The BMW in. Uh -huh. And I have a pair of. Derek Spear Design, I think version 2 pedals they are, the Pro pedals. So it'll be my first time trying out anything Fanatec and anything DSD, so I'll give you a mini review. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be okay. Right, so here's uh, here's Joe's setup here. Fanatec wheel with the uh, GT2 BMW room, which I've also wanted to have a go on. With this really cool overlay dash thing. What's this called? This bit uh, it's the back? a company called Sim Racing Hardware or SRH for short. Yeah. Um, they do these dashboards to fit Thrustmaster uh, direct drive wheels and Fanatec and the same for the LED display as well. Uh, they're a UK company as well or hand built so they're pretty cool. That's pretty yeah it does look pretty damn cool and then at the bottom here to complement that I'm going to try and get down here the old Derek Spear design pedals which I'm looking forward to trying because uh, quite a hefty break on that, more than I'm used to, so I wonder how I'm going to cope with that. We'll mm. see. Let's find out. <laughs> Very interesting view of the uh, the pedals now, this is where I'm sitting. And the first of all, first thing I notice is how easy the throttle is. It's a bit too, a bit too easy for me. I think uh, Joe said it can be adjusted, but I'm really not putting any pressure in there. The brake, however, you have to really give it a push on the way down. But the thing I'm noticing about it is that it feels a lot more positive. It feels. Um, it's a lot easier to sort of remember where your foot was, that muscle memory coming to play there. So I'm really keen to see how it's going to be when we actually get out on the track. Just booting up RF2 now, so we'll let you know when we get there. Right then, so I've just been sort of driving the pedals and this wheel for about, what, half an hour or so now? Some, something half like that. Half hour, 45 minutes. Yeah, I've, been, I've given it a red hot go. And um, the pedals, uh, the brake, like I said, is the standout of, of, the, of the set. I mean, the, the, the throttle is very light um we said before it's just a spring replacement but i was just driving the usf 2000 car around donnington and you you learn you learn how you would in the real car you sort of you come you come to we're driving the the national layout the short layout and when you come to the last chicane and you break you know i i, I sort of feel the break then maybe not have a good run for the corner maybe i um, carry a bit too much speed let me come next lap i break a bit more and I know, I know sort of, I, in my mind, I know where those sort of stages are on the brake. It's quite hard to explain without really um, giving it a go yourself. The wheel as well, we, I cranked up the full seat back to see what it could do. And I must say, I'm, I was quite impressed with the strength that the Fanatec wheel had to offer. This is one of the earlier Fanatec wheels, so I'm impressed it's still working. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, it, it put up a lot of strength and quite a surprising amount of detail as well. Um, the... I'm, I can't speak for the new ones, but for this one, you're saying you got it used, didn't you? Yeah, it was 10 months old when I got it, and it's version 1.5, which just after they had the issues with all the motors in the first one, they got a new batch of motors, and it's been fine. I've had it three, four years now. Okay, so so it's, it's lasted pretty well, but um, compared to what the Thrustmaster offering at the time, um, this is maybe gives a bit more a bit more weight, it's a bit stronger, but the, the detail is no different. So, um, again, aside from that, though, the wheel though, and driving with gloves as well was a pretty cool experience. This wheel is a very nice piece, uh, piece of kit, and I'm, maybe something I'd uh, think about in the future. We'll see. Race day, and we're just watching uh, the qualifying conference. As you can see, I didn't really get much sleep. <laughs> 
because of uh, this little fella here. A bit of a face sitter, which you know, usually I'm into that, but not so much when I'm trying to sleep. Uh, so I got about two hours of sleep last night after, after having to wake up early yesterday. So now I've got to be an absolute champ and have. Uh, are you gonna just carry me around? Well, yeah, I'll give it a go. Yeah. You're about me, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Go for like a Yoda thing. <laughs> oh, look, look! It says Silverstone. It's the middle there, but it says Silverstone. <laughs> I think we're going the right way. Yeah. Cool. Let me hit this guy up here. So this is the first time I've ever been to Silverstone. Joe's a bit of an old hand, but uh, yeah, I've, I've only been like 30 times. <laughs> the signs, Joe. Signs that say where we are. Look at that. And, and we've got quite, quite good weather today as well. Like after what you sort of said beforehand, I was scared of the going to get some rain, but it's looking all right today. Yeah, so far it's looking like it's going to be a lot better than predicted. Big old car park, eh? Just about see the wing in the distance as well. Yeah. I thought one of those old fucking nurse hats, you know, the old matron hats, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nurse hats, that's probably definitely the word what they're called. <laughs> um, so I guess from here, the now doesn't know what to do, but I'm going to just no. keep going. There it is! Welcome to Bulberstone. Do I need tickets now? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, boy! <laughs> so here we are, Silverstone map. We are... Here. <laughs> and we have to go here. And you'd think, oh, that's easy. Yeah, no. You would think that's easy. <laughs> but you, uh, you go all the way around into here. So we're going to get the buff, I think. Yeah, probably a good idea. Oh, no. <laughs> Correct. Some very expensive bits around here, and I'm not allowed to touch any of it. <laughs> What's that about? You're still alive somewhere, GTRLM. <laughs> You're still alive somewhere. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so, well, my sort of personal goal today to try and find this man as a fellow sim racer and try and get him to sign something or repeat the famous phrase, no punterino jimmer. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. So that was and continues to be uh, F3, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, it just about caught the race start there. I actually had to run up to the stands like a madman to get up there, but uh, looking pretty cool. I mean, get an idea of a speed through there. It's actually quite a big bump between uh, T1 and 2 that I've never ever felt in the sim before, but you've seen the cars bounce through there, here in the background there. But uh, I thought it was really interesting to see that bump. I just had to give this a whirl. I should probably put my camera down now. I should give it to Joe instead. There you go, Joe. My first time using the D29. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a lot of rotation. Okay. Got the traction control as well, it feels like. Nope. There you go, that was that. So there you go then, apparently I'm the fastest. We said, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that is nuts. That is nuts. There you go ladies and gentlemen. Sim racing YouTuber does good. <laughs> yeah boy. 
So whilst we're bussing around Silverstone, I'm going to give you a very quick G29 review from my very quick experience of it. The force feedback is that of a G27. It's a G27. You don't really need to know that. Put a couple of buttons on it. Um, for whatever reason, they were using the brake and the clutch uh, for the pedals instead of the brake and the throttle. So the brake and the clutch is a sort of creeper in the side of it, you know. <laughs> so the, the brake and the clutch was a bit of a weird combination, but you got used to it eventually. They're also running Project Cars as well, which, you know, I did throw up a little bit, but I, I, I you know, I. You persevered. Yeah, I went down with it, I kept going. And uh, we're top for now, which is so cool, so cool. But um, I doubt we'll be top come the end of the day, but he said to go back at 10 to 5 and then we'll find out, so. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first annual Spot the Bailey. Uh, apparently, he's round here somewhere, so we're gonna have a look for him. See if we can find the old codger. Have a Bailey! Yeah, he's down straight away! <laughs> How are you doing? Nicky team. Oh well. We might catch him at some point. Nicky! <laughs> Come back! So over there somewhere is the uh, it's the grid show. <laughs> it's happening, we just can't see it. <laughs> Lots of hats I'm getting here. Hope you guys like hats. I love hats. Started and the Toyotas are pulling away. I like to. I like to believe it's because of the headband. Like they look. They look to stand to see. Oh wow, Jimmy's here! Uh, like, oh, we're going really fast now. Oh, in an unsurprising news, bike colours are already dead. So, well done, Kubica. You did the right thing. You did the right thing. over to a stand over there now which you can't see and um, we just felt rain so it's gonna get interesting. Got some bread you got there, I might have to borrow that. Hey boy. Yes. Especially the seven, 
There's smoke coming out the back of them. So I'm not sure if there's a problem. But I guess we'll wait and see. They're still leading. They're still one, two, but smoking. <laughs> Ridiculous. Any one with moves because it's damn cold in the stands. I can't tell you how cold it is on the stands. I don't understand why it's so cold, but it's warmer just down here at, uh, at track level. This is T1. And that is very fucking fast. <laughs> the guy in the safety car to give us a quick wave. Sitting down here. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. Yeah. We have rain, quite heavy rain, well not always heavy, it's heavy than it's been so it's far. Hard, so it if, it, if it continues to this sort of rain, it will, the track will get a bit wetter. For this. It could be interesting. <laughs> I love rain. So from what we think, or from what Bailey thinks, because Bailey knows all, that the number two Porsche yeah. has put on a spongier slick tyre, which is a bit better in these conditions. And we just saw, we just missed it on 40 on camera. See, it's slick to medium. We, we, we just saw a... Um, um, the two tyres go, go through and a Porsche go through, and the Porsche was so much faster. And it stopped raining. There you go. It's sort of hard to tell at this point now. We think that both the Porsches have gone onto sort of this uh, softer tyre to cope with the rain. But it's stopped raining now, so this could potentially be a wrong decision from them. We're about halfway into the race now, give or take a couple of minutes. And uh, it's looking like Porsche's decision to take whatever tyre they took, be it the soft immediate, as we're dubbing it, I suppose, or people are dubbing it. Um, it's, it's paying off because the, uh, the, the two are sort of naffed off. The one was last time we checked right on the back of the seven and the eight. So looking like things are swinging in Porsche's favour for now, anyway. That's fair enough. Here's a uh, unique view. We're on a bus. <laughs> I need to bring that into the race session, Super Duty race bus, we need some cars. race safari, and the guys get rifles as well, like old school uh, English hunters. <laughs> Did you see that? There was actually a race safari. I'm sure that happened. I saw it on Facebook, but um, there was actually a bus driving <laughs> This is great! We're going around with them, boys! Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're not quite as agile as these cars through here, but getting close. Toyota, Toyota, Toyota Bay, yay! Come on, something! And as soon as we're up here, nothing comes. <laughs> He's slowed down for us. You little git. <laughs> if you want, I'll stay here for a little bit. Oh. 
So we've just come down to Max uh, and Beckerson Chapel and as you can hear, car going slowly, or cars going slowly under code 80 now. There's talk of a fire somewhere in one of the cars, not quite sure which one yet, I'm just going to listen to the tunnel and try and see what's happening, but uh, first code 80 after over half race distance, so pretty impressive I guess, but no idea who's uh, been afflicted as of yet. So quick update to what's going on there, it was the 92 Porsche that uh, caught fire, so GG Porsche. many minutes it feels like and we're hearing that it's one of the uh, Toyotas that went off the uh, number seven from what it sounded like anyway I think it was up at Cops because I saw a massive cloud of smoke up there I can't quite see from here uh, Cops there's a little bit elevation change downhill here but uh, it sounds like the seven's gone off in a big way which is why we're on the code 8 again but uh, again unsure what's happened there here is the seven that is broken that is very broken. Jesus Christ. Right, so you may remember earlier on in this vlog, I took part in a little competition with the G29 and Project Cars. I just got a phone call to say that I have the fastest time of the day, so I've won something. No idea what it is, I'm going to go and find out now, but uh, pretty damn happy with that. Guess the uh, sim racing YouTube channel is warranted now. I finally have validation. Change the dress again, I keep like changing bits of clothing. Um, I've just been told the prize for winning the, uh, the project car thing is I get to go into the Aston garage. So I've got my Aston shirt, lucky Aston shirt, which smells. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's and uh, yeah, I'm going to take Mr. Bailey with us, who's behind the camera right now, for his, because it's his birthday soon ish. He's like 40 or something, so he'll be dead soon, so I'll, I'll take him in. <laughs> I've just been told I am allowed to film in here, as long as I don't film any of the engineering screens. And this is so surreal! Look at Lady Sir! All the guys around here. Behind these gents, Petro Lamy's getting ready. I've never had this experience before. This is amazing. What a shame. I just hit the Aston, I think, or oh, the other way around. Guys, this 
shouting for some tape patches for the car. I think I'm going to try and just tape it up and get it back out there. There isn't too long to go, but I don't know how much it's going to affect it. And of course, it's right out of my bloody line of vision. Of course. Busted tire that just came off the uh, off the Aston there. It's a really interesting insight getting to see all this is in the workings. superstitious but uh, I have an unlucky Aston Martin shirt and uh, I'm wearing it right now and uh, that car just got bumped so <laughs> GTM, I think due to a splash and dash, I guess, for the Ferrari, which I didn't quite think about. It's looking good for these guys. <laughs> Drama continues. They're getting ready, it looks like they might need a, a splash just to cost them. It's going to be really interesting. So there's literally just over a minute left now. They're going to have a fuel, this could be it. I think I might just have it. It's looking damn close. And the Aston's actually posting at this point, it seems. It's quite tense. 
things down here at the moment, I'm not going to lie. Ferrari gets it on the line. Aston runs out of fuel. So basically what just happened is that the uh, the Amco 98, which is now battered on the side, I think it's just stopped there, it's out of fuel. Um, yeah, it made it to the end, so that's fine. But um, the problem is, the, after that, the, there's some Ferrari. And I'm, I'm, was, it, was it that car? Was it Another Aston. Basically, it was contact it was after. Aston, it was yeah, it was the two the GTE Am leaders. Was it on the stove? It was, it was coming together at stove. I didn't see exactly what happened. The Ferrari was in the gravel. Ferrari just punted him. Um, I would say that it's quite a, I don't know. Strange atmosphere. Yeah, it's a strange atmosphere here at the moment. It's one of sort of like confusion and uh, disappointment. It's very hard to describe. Target sighted. <laughs> 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 but we can uh, try to get Nikki over to uh, make a comparison. Who wore oh, it that'd better? Be, that'd be so great if you can, man. <laughs> Let me see what I can do. Thanks for coming out. Nikki, I've got a massive favour to ask you. <laughs> yes. Basically, I, I do what you do. I, I do uh, sim racing on YouTube, right? Great. And my subscribers have this sort of thing, okay? And uh, what I want you to say, if you don't mind, is please know Punterino Jimmer. So please no Punterino Jimmer. What does that mean? <laughs> basically mean it basically means don't hit me, Jimmy. Uh, don't punch. So so pl please no Punterino Jimmer. Okay. Yeah? You got it? You're gonna go yeah. for it? <laughs> okay. Please no punter Punterino. Punterino. And Jimmer. Jimmer. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care of him. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so race over now. We're back out of the Aston garage, and I can't say what a fantastic experience it was. I'll probably do like a better outro than this in a minute because I can't think of anything to say right now. But uh, Toyota wins it, obviously, because best best team, DD7. Yes. And um, yeah, I guess we just try and get out of it. Try and get out of here now. Apparently, it's not nice to do so. But we're on the bus now, and I'm sort of chilled out, and I'm just, I'm thoroughly tired. This has been a fantastic day, and I have to say a massive thank you to the. You can't see him; he's sitting right in front of me. Hello, to Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe Thomas, who basically made this happen, and everyone else who turned up. We had like people come together. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty rad. So yeah. Did we all have a good time? Yeah. yeah? Yeah, I hated every moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's now Monday and I'm lying on my bed seductively because I'm so tired. I've just driven back uh, oh, well, to home and I wanted to do a better outro than I did when I was actually at the event because I was super tired on the bus. I, I'm sure you could probably tell I was really quite tired after sort of walking around all day but um, I'm really thoroughly thankful to Joe for making this all happen because uh, when I went to Le Mans, when I went to the uh, 2015 Le Mans, I was in a really terrible place mentally so it didn't come across much in the vlog because I choose not to show that of course but um, I had a, aside from obviously seeing all the cars go around which I, I still love despite feeling bad, um, I wasn't really able to fully enjoy the experience but this time at uh, WE Silverstone, uh, WEC Silverstone, I had you know all my friends there, and just a fantastic race. It was in England as well, so it felt a bit more comfortable to me. And I don't know, it was just a really awesome experience. And also to top it all off at the end, to go into the Aston Martin garage for the last hour was just magical. I have to say a massive thank you to AMR for making that happen. So um, would I recommend going to WEC Silverstone? Yes, 100%. Do it. Like The worst case scenario is 
I don't know, you go a little bit deaf. <laughs> Where's the mere defenders, seriously? If you're if you're next to the track for a while, you can actually bust your ears quite badly. But um it was so worth the experience and I had such a fun time and you know, hopefully I'll be able to go to another event this year, that'll be even cooler. Maybe even Le Mans next year. Who knows? But uh I hope you enjoyed that little insight guys. I know it wasn't wasn't really a very it didn't flow very well the vlog, it was sort of just me picking moments that I enjoyed. Uh, but if you did like it, then make sure to hit that like button. If you really like to hit subscribe to be notified of future videos. And yeah, take care guys. Have an awesome day. I'm going to go to sleep now. <laughs> Goodbye.